Welcome, welcome to the family. Welcome home. We're so glad that you were here. Can't wait to see you all back next week. Uh, it's going to be incredible. But uh, just super excited for what God has in store for us tonight. Uh, I truly believe that God has you here on purpose, for a purpose. You're not here uh, by mistake. You're not here by accident. But God has something special for you uh, here tonight. And I'm telling you, I truly believe with everything inside of me that a lot of us are going to be set free here tonight. Really, even more than just set free, I think a lot of us are going to be challenged here tonight. Because if I'm being completely honest, I think that what God is doing, like a lot of times we talk about like what's happening here in youth, we, we talk about it being like this thing called momentum. And it's like cool, and yeah, I agree, like there's some momentum and there's a lot of stuff happening, but more so than momentum, I truly believe with everything inside of me that God is starting a movement. God is starting a movement, and he's just going to continue to move and do what only he can do, but I truly believe with everything inside of me that he wants to use you, and that this is just the beginning, that we haven't even begin, began to Scratch the surface of what God has in store for us. So tonight, I truly think that we're going to be challenged. But I want to ask you, are you willing to accept the challenge? See, because I, I want you to understand, too, that, yes, this is incredible. Yeah, it's amazing what God has been doing. And I truly believe the best is yet to come. But it's going to cost you something. It's going to cost you. And just as we dive into what God has for us, I want you to really ask yourself this question. Is it worth it? Is it worth the cost? See, because I think that a lot of times, man, we get really really, really comfortable. I think a lot of times, myself included, that we become comfortable Christians. And if I'm being completely honest, I think that one good sign of being able to tell if you are a comfortable Christian, whenever you look at your life, do you rely on God as your comforter? See, I think that a lot of times we're, we're not really uncomfortable, but we become comfortable Christians that we kind of check the box, that we go to church on Sunday, so we check that box, and then, oh, well, I'll go on uh, Wednesday too, so I'll check that box, and it's like, okay, cool, and we become these comfortable Christians that we come in, and like, uh, like I said, it's incredible that you all want to come in, dive in, even before we're done outside, like y'all would rather be in here, and that's incredible, I love it, and man, it shows growth, but it's like, man, I, I want to get in there. I want to get the front row. Man, I want to get in the, at least the front two rows. You know what I'm saying? So maybe uh, <laughs> second row, he won't spit on me as much. So it's like, man, I, I, but I want to get in there. And man, I, I want to get in the chair. And even with moving to the main auditorium, I think it's incredible that we're able to go from in here to in there simply because of us growing. Like, that's awesome. But all I heard over the past year for the main reason wanting to go in there was because the chairs are more comfortable. Amen, right? <laughs> yeah, honesty, I love it. <laughs> but it's true. And it's like, oh, I want to go in there because the chairs are more comfortable. And I never heard, I want to go in there because we have to. I want to go back in there because God is moving so much that we just outgrow that room and we have to go in there. No, no, no. It's like, oh, I want to because I can relax and maybe sleep a little better while you're preaching. <laughs> like the chair is comfy. Like I, I want to do that. But that's the reality, though, is that we have become comfortable Christians. But tonight I'm praying that the Holy Spirit convicts you and we become uncomfortable Christians. I hope that you leave here and you're going, man, I... I don't know. Man, I know that I probably shouldn't be dating that person because they're not taking me closer to Jesus. 
man, whenever I'm with them, man, I'm not the best person. Man, I, I probably don't need to be with that guy because, man, he, he's just not bringing me closer to Jesus. Man, I, I don't need to be with that girl because my focus is more on her than it is on Jesus. And some of you all are going to be uncomfortable, but you need to go tonight and break up with them. Ugh. <laughs> Like someone just broke up here. <laughs> like, I don't know what happened. But no, like for real, it's like, oh, man, some of you all, some of you all have friends that you don't need to be hanging with anymore. I'm not saying that you don't share Jesus with them. But stop using that as an excuse to surround yourself with them and continue to live like them. Some of you all need to leave that group chat. Some of y'all need to break the streak. You know what I'm saying? Snapchat. Like, it's like, got the streak. Can't stand them. You know what I'm saying? Streak. <laughs> like, some of y'all need to end the streak. But for real, some of you all, we need to be more uncomfortable and step out of our comfort zone. Some of you all need to invite someone to youth next week. And listen, it's awesome that you've been inviting people, but can we be real? You're probably inviting people who's already been around you. When's the last time you walked up to a stranger and was like, hey, we'd love for you to come check this thing out. It's a little uncomfortable. I just don't like people. <laughs> I just can't do it. I think I'm going to throw up. Like, ooh, like, I can't. But can you imagine if you actually relied on God as the comforter and you allowed yourself to get a little uncomfortable and it was less about what you could do and more about what he could do in and through you? Can you imagine having 200 plus students every single week because of our uncomfortability and relying on him as the comforter. Can you imagine if you were uncomfortable? See, some of y'all right now, y'all were tore up. I, people saying, that's hilarious because I don't know what that's supposed to say, but it's like zero, one, or something that looks old says old and some of y'all were like I'm too old like that's why it caught me off guard ADHD I'm sorry back on track <laughs> anyways but some of y'all you're like oh, I can't get up out of the floor I'm just too old you're 12 like like it's fine like chill out like you were literally 12 years old I'm over here like man I can't do their church clap anymore I'm actually getting old like you know what I'm saying? it's like man but that's the reality it's like oh I just can't do it and oh man the floor it kind of it kind of hurts and there's some people that you invited people and it's their first time here and you're like I'm so sorry. Uh, we usually have chairs. Like, I'm, and you're uncomfortable because <laughs> it's like, man, I invited them. I told them that it wasn't weird. And look at us sit, sitting on the floor, like kind of being a little weird, doing the church clap, being a little crazy. And it's like, no, 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 I promise. Like, it's not usually like this. And they're like, okay, <laughs> I bet it's not. But you're a little uncomfortable even right now. But see, I think that we've gotten way too comfortable, and some of you all are even uncomfortable sitting on the floor. Maybe your back's hurting, you're leaning back. It's like, oh, I can't do it. But over the next, like, five minutes, for the next five minutes, if you could just lean into what God has for us, if we could just get a little bit more uncomfortable tonight and lean on him as our comforter, because some of you all need a comforter. Some of you all come in and you're brokenhearted. Some of you come in and you're, you're hurting and you're going through pain and you're going through a trial in your life and you don't understand it, you don't get it and it doesn't make sense and it's hurting and tonight you need a comforter and you can experience him tonight and his name is Jesus. But will you allow him in? Are you willing to get a little bit uncomfortable? John 15, starting in verse 18. Going through 20, it says this. If the world hates you, say hates. If the world hates you, keep in mind that it hated me first. If you belong to the world, it would love you as its own. As it is, you do not belong to the world. But I have chosen you out of the world. That is why the world 
hates you. Remember what I told you, a servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will persecute you also. If they obeyed my teaching, they will obey yours also. My first point here tonight is this, is we are in the world, not of the world. We're in the world, but not of the world. Yes, we're in the world, but we don't look like the world. We don't talk like the world. We don't act like the world. I always ask people, man, if I looked at your life, would I want to know your Jesus? If I looked at your life, would I want to know your Jesus? If I were to look at your life, would I know that Jesus is in the center of it? You're in the world, not of the world. What's so uncomfortable about this is that, man, it's not comfortable whenever people hate you. It's not comfortable whenever the world is against you. But let it be a sign that, hey, maybe I'm following Jesus. Maybe my life looks more like Jesus because, man, if he says right here that if the world hated me and you belong to me, then the world is also gonna hate you. And listen, it's gonna be uncomfortable whenever people don't ask you to go places. It's gonna be uncomfortable whenever you're not the life of the party. It's gonna be uncomfortable whenever you feel like, man, no one's there for me, but that's whenever you know the truth and the truth will set you free. That even in those times when you feel alone and you feel like no one cares and you feel like no one's there for you, you can know the truth that Jesus will never leave you nor forsake you, that he is always right there with you and that your comforter will comfort you even in the uncomfortable times. And it's gonna cost you. Like I said at the very beginning, is it worth the cost? Is it worth it? We're just gonna come to a close here. Worship team can go ahead, come on up. But I want us to look at the scripture here. Luke 9, 23. It says this, then he said to them all, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross daily. Follow me. You must deny yourself. You must die to yourself. Die to your wants. Die to your comfortability. To live for Jesus. You must pick up your cross. Whenever I thought about that, I thought about Jesus carrying the cross. To be crucified. After he had already been beaten and taking the punishment that we deserve and him taking up that cross. And I can guarantee you, it wasn't comfortable. The pain he was going through. But he looked at you. He saw you. Not the best version of you, but the broken you, the hurting you. He saw it and he said that you were worth it. So right now, right now, whenever you look to die to yourself and you look to carry that cross, Jesus worth it? Is it worth the cost? And I can tell you this right now, it's my last point. That following Jesus is worth it. Following Jesus is worth it. He has a better life for you. Doesn't mean an easier life. Doesn't mean that you're not gonna go through pain. Doesn't mean that everything's gonna be perfect. But I can guarantee you, it's worth it. But you 
have to count the cost. Is it worth it to be bold about your faith? Is it worth it to you to stand out when you stand up for Jesus? Is it worth it for the world to hate you and to be against you? I ask you if you would, close your eyes and bow your heads with me. Have you become too comfortable? you're here tonight and you've given your life to Jesus maybe you look at your life and you go man I I have been a little too comfortable will you step out of your comfortability rely on the comforter rely on him to lead you to guide you to direct you every step of the way Will you fix your eyes back on him? Would you be on fire for Jesus? Would you die to yourself daily to live for him? Die to your wants to fulfill his will. But maybe you're here tonight and if you're being completely honest, you're a little uncomfortable. Maybe you're here and you're like, man, how does he know that I'm hurting? that I'm broken. And I know I, I don't need to be in that relationship. Man, I know the people I'm surrounding myself with, it's not healthy. You're a little uncomfortable because you think you're hiding it really well, but the Holy Spirit knows that you're struggling with suicidal thoughts and depression and anxiety. That you feel hopeless. But tonight, will you turn to the comforter? Will you call out on Jesus? Declare him as Lord of your life. Because Jesus loves you. He loves you so much that he took that cross. And he died for a sinner like you and me. But he didn't stay there. He rose again, defeating death and its sting. So whatever battle or whatever struggle you're going through, know that it is one with Jesus. But will you turn to him? Will you declare him as Lord of your life? So with every head bowed, every eye closed, no one looking around, if that's you and you're ready to give your life to Jesus here tonight. You're ready to give your life to him. I'm gonna ask you to pray this prayer with me. And listen, a prayer is not gonna save you. But if you believe it in your heart, you can confess it with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. You're ready to surrender your life to him. You're tired of doing it on your own. Say, God, I'm sorry. God, I've messed up. God, I've made mistakes. God, I've sinned. But Jesus, I believe. Jesus, I believe that you came for me. Jesus, I believe that you died for me. And Jesus, I believe that three days later, you rose from the grave for a sinner like me. I repent. I turn from my sin, I I turn from my old ways, and Jesus, I turn to you, I run to you. I declare you as Lord of my life. Please forgive me. With every head bowed, every eye closed, if that's you, tonight you gave your life to Jesus. You surrendered your life to Jesus. You accepted Jesus as Lord of your life. And it's gonna be a little uncomfortable what I'm gonna ask you to do because on the count of three, if that was you, with every head bowed, every eye closed, no one looking around. If that was you, I'm gonna ask you on the count of three, just slip up your hand just so I can be praying for you. 
One, I'm so proud of you. Two, Jesus loves you so much. And three, if that was you, would you just lift up your hand? Keep them up. Hands raised everywhere. Keep them up. I'm so proud of you. So proud of you. I'm so proud of you. I'm so proud of you. So proud of you. So proud of you. I'm 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 so proud of you. And Jesus loves you so much. And listen, this is just the beginning. Just the beginning. But now is the time to go. And it's gonna be a little uncomfortable. But tonight, after we're done worshiping here in just a moment, if tonight you've raised your hand and you declared Jesus as Lord of your life, after service, I'm gonna ask you to stick around for two minutes just so we can, one, give you a free gift to help you on your journey with Jesus, and two, just wanna celebrate with you and pray with you. But if that was you, you raise your hand here tonight. After we're done worshiping, please stick around. We'd love to talk to you and help you on your journey with Jesus. But for the rest of us, the time to go is now. Talked about it before and it's still true. It's time to step out of your comfort zone. Time to step out of your comfort zone. Truly live for Jesus. God, we just come to you right now and we just thank you. God, we just thank you just for who you are, God, for all that you've done. God, I pray that you just continue to move over these next few moments of worship. That God, you would just continue to do what only you can do. God, we love you. God, we thank you. God, we praise you. In Jesus' name I ask and I pray and everybody said, amen.